The featherweight title will be unified at UFC 290 as the champion Alexander Volkanovsky taking on the interim belt holder from Mexico, Yair Rodriguez. Joining me for the big preview, the head man at Fortis MMA, Safe Saud. And Safe, these are two must-see fighters, especially in the featherweight division. Obviously, Volkanovsky has been the king for a long time, and Yair Rodriguez does stuff in the octagon nobody else does. What a way to cap International Fight Week. Absolutely, Brennan. This matchup has fireworks written all over it. Volkanovski comes back after a classic battle with Islam where he almost won the lightweight title. A lot of people think he won that fight. Comes back down with that precision striking, the power. We know that he bulked up a little for 55. I can't wait to see what he looks like. Awesome footwork and some of the best fight IQ we've seen in the game. Takes on the dynamic striker, Yair Rodriguez. Incredible kicks, incredible movement. Yair has rounded his game out with good submissions from his back. Can't wait to see this fight. It's going to be so explosive. Of course, Yair Rodriguez looking to join the Mexican wave of champions as he looks to take the undisputed featherweight title, something he's been gunning for for a long time. And Alexander Volkanovsky is padding his resume as the featherweight greatest of all time. Let's go into fight focus. And there's a lot to break down when you talk about fighters of this caliber. We're going to start with the striking on both sides. They obviously do it in very different ways. We'll come with Yair Rodriguez first and the dynamic kicks that nobody else does. Probably one of the most well-versed kickers we've seen inside the octagon. He can kick southpaw. He can kick orthodox. Let's take a look at some of the incredible stuff Yair does with his legs. Unreal. We really haven't seen anything like it, Brendan. Let's just stop right here. Okay, this was his last fight against Josh Emmett where he actually won the interim belt. And we know Yair fights southpaw. We know he fights orthodox. Josh Emmett's got that big right hand. He's in front of him. He's, you know, he's analyzing the situation. Yair does this a lot. He's going to go ahead and throw this left kick to the head, and he gets a block, right? Emmett's like, all right, I see what you got going on. He blocks it, brings the hands up, no problem. But what Yair does is he's setting traps. So now we got Emmett, eyes on him, looking at him. Here comes Yair again. He's going to throw another kick from that same exact position. He's going to uncork it. We want to pause it right here, okay? Let's take a look at this right here. We've got Emmett with his arms up. He's covering his face right here. His elbows are covering his body. There's not really a lot of space right here, Brennan. When you take a look at it, Emmett is ready, right? Head, body, but not against Yair. Yair is so good at sneaking this body kick in. He's going to come right underneath. Let's look at where he lands this shot. He came right underneath those elbows and found the shot perfectly. Really, really hurts Emmett here. Take a look at his face. I mean, it tells you everything you need to know. That's that liver shot. Gets him reacting. This is what Yair does. You're going to see after Yair lands this big kick, you're going to see Emmett right here. Emmett's peeking up right here, right? I mean, he's cowered down here. He's hurt. He's looking up. And he's looking up for good reason because right as he looks up, here comes Yair. He's so good at adding these punches on. He'll add these shots on and he lands them. This one's right behind the ear too. He lands them right after he lands the kicks. So you get hit with a kick, you're crumpled, you're hurt. And all of a sudden, here comes the hands up top. So really good stuff here by Yair. He puts everything together. Now he's southpaw again, right? Emmett's looking. Where's Emmett's vision at? Emmett's got to have eyes on what? He's looking at those legs, man. He does not want to get hit with that kick again. And so Gaier goes back to southpaw, starts coming forward again, and you can just see Emmett. I mean, he is reeling here. Takes a deep breath, and watch Emmett. We include this in here to show the leg switch from Yair. Yair steps forward. Emmett's, I got to get away from that left leg, so he steps out. Watch what Yair does. Yair switches to the orthodox stance. He starts, can I use it really mm -hmm. fast? He starts walking in. I need you to go ortho for me. Okay. I know you're a south. Yeah, I, mean, I, I need Sorry ortho. So he starts walking him in, right, like this. And he knows Emmett's going to go this way. He doesn't want to get hit with that big body kick. When he does that, Yair, what? Just does a simple step forward. And when he steps forward, we're going to see what he does. So Yair steps forward here. And now Emmett is looking at a different picture. Little slide, little shuffle from Yair. And before you know it, Emmett slides forward, try to line up that right hand. Bang. That's what he does. He'll be here. He's got that left kick. Then he just steps forward here. He can bang the legs and he can throw up high. So he switches the stances so seamlessly and just transitions right into it. Whatever you step into, you're stepping into a problem. So then he lands that hard leg kick and Emmett's thinking, geez, man, I'm getting hit to the body. I'm getting hit to the head. That's why we added that in there. 
Now he backs up, he's ortho, and we're gonna see that little switch shuffle. And when he switches and shuffles, let's watch Emmett here, watch Emmett's hands, watch his reactions. Man, I don't wanna get hit with that kick. He's looking for that left body kick that he got hit with. So Emmett's like, all right, I can't keep waiting here. Nothing good is gonna happen. I've gotta come forward. And when he does come forward, just a little tempo change by Yair. And there he goes again, landing that kick perfectly. He lands it right underneath. And he does this little thing where when he throws it, and he dips his hip in there. Usually when you see this, Brendan, you see this foot pointing all the way out. But when Yair does it, right, it's kind of here. He does it where he throws it in a way and then he gets a little extra bit in here to touch people. They think they're out of range, but they're not. He's really a master at it. It's incredible to watch. And again, right after he does it, he adds on right away. He, right, that leg isn't even coming down yet, Brendan. The leg isn't even down yet, there's a punch. So he's always attacking from multiple places. He sets everything up with his tremendous kicks. We see it again, right underneath the guard. Perfect execution, always attacking the liver. Very dangerous stuff here from now. You're incredible kicks um, using that left leg. And we're gonna see the right leg as well. So here he is against Zombie. And the reason I put this in here is I, Volkanovski is very well known for kicking the legs. He's very good at it. I don't really think he's gonna go and try to play kick for kick against Yair Rodriguez, but he will probably attack the legs at some point using his sneaky footwork and his striking. So you're gonna see what Yair does here. We saw what he does offensively. Watch what he does with his kicks defensively in the counter. There's a step back. You wanna kick my leg? I'm here, I'm just gonna step back. Now I was an orthodox, now I'm in that really dangerous what? Southpaw stance that we know he fires that body kick and that head kick from. Zombie knows that. Look at the angle that Yair has created by that step back. Now he's outside the leg. Zombie is in a terrible position here. His legs are together and he's looking behind Yair. So this simple step back with his footwork puts him in a great position. If it wasn't for his kicking being so dangerous too, it wouldn't freeze people. So you see Zombie kind of freezes there. Oh, I didn't like that. Now he's back to southpaw. There's the feint. Zombie, nope, I don't want to get kicked with that body kick. I don't want to get kicked in the head. So you see him waiting and kind of waiting. This is a wait and bait, Yair. Eyes are always on. Look at Yair. Look at Yair. Let's, let's, let's keep, let's watch the eyes and watch the feet. The feet are always moving, but the eyes are always paying attention. These high-level strikers are always watching the reactions, right? He's looking and watching at the reactions and he's changing his stance, changing the picture. And we're gonna see, so now he's orthodox and he's just gonna step over just a little bit. He starts sliding to his left. Well, there he shows that southpaw again. He's lining it up, bang, there it is. So the switching with the footwork sets up these awesome kicks. We saw the high kicks, we saw the body kicks. Now we're seeing the leg kicks. Great stuff here by Yair. Skates out of there and he's on to something else. This is him against Jeremy Stevens. Give him a little, little something, something, bang. Now. What's so amazing when you break this down, first of all, the ability for his body to do that, right? Uh, I can't do that. I don't know a lot of people that can do that. I know lots of good fighters. We got a lot of them here in the UFC. I don't know a lot of fighters that can do this, but let's talk about what's so awesome about this. So you see Yair, he's in the southpaw stance, right? And Jeremy Stevens knows. He's, again, he's looking. He doesn't want to get hit with this. Nobody wants to get hit with that leg. Whatever the rear leg's back, he's going to pay attention. So Jeremy does the right thing, and he starts to what? He starts to circle away from all that. So as he circles away, Yair goes, oh, you wanna go away? Okay. He jumps up, reverse spin kick, brings the left leg up, right? And you see Stevens here, he's caught. He's reacting right away, because he's like, man, I thought I was circling away. Not, he doesn't throw that lead leg, he throws the follow-up right leg. And in the close distance and proximity for him to be able to do these moves, unbelievable. There's really no other athlete that can do it the way that he does, especially in the featherweight division. So we're, you're always worrying about it, and then you worry about it, worry about it, and then here comes just that body kick again that he was worried about that he circled away from. And let's look. We freeze it right here. We see Stevens. He's blocking the head. He's paying attention. It's that same motion. So Yair has that once he winds it up, people get ready. And the first thing they think about is blocking their head, right? Well, you're gonna see Emmett barely had space. Emmett had like a little tiny window. Yair found it. You give him that kind of window, he's gonna find it every time. And he does. 
crushes him to the body, nails him with this kick. And what's even better is the kick that follows up with it. Steven starts to turn away. I mean, the vision of Yair and the speed lands that kick, throwing punches. He's already throwing the right kick as he retreats to that side, drops him, goes crazy here. Yair's kicking game is unlike anybody else's, and Volkanovski's gonna have to be prepared for it. Well, it's not just the kicks, because as we show there, you have to worry about a lot when it comes to the kicks at all three levels, but he adds onto it with the punches as well, speaks to his diversity in the striking department. Absolutely. Yair is not all legs, okay? This guy's got lightning speed and his upper body attacks, his hands, his elbows, he does everything. Let's take a look at some of the awesome stuff he does in the octagon. Let's let this play here. What? What did we just see here, Brendan? Now, I put this in here because I don't know who's all seen the zombie fight. Our viewers probably have all seen the zombie fight if they're watching UFC Breakdown. But this is the elbow they lands before the other elbow, and we'll talk about that. And let's watch what Yair does here. So that wasn't an accident, because people were saying, oh, you know, that elbow's lucky, and you know, he did it earlier in the fight. So this is part of his arsenal. And what he does is, when he starts backing up, you never want to take multiple steps back, right? If you keep hard charging at me and coming at me, and I keep stepping back, eventually I'm going to run into the side of the octagon, and I'm out of space, right? I'm going to get hit. So we always say, one step back is all you get, then you got to create an angle. While Yair had taken a couple steps back, as we saw in the film, he's got his hands up, he knows I can't do that. He's created another level, and that level is where? Down. Mm -hmm. He goes way low in a place where you really don't see fighters go, and he does it so fast that you can't react with knees and uppercuts. So look at Zombie. He's hard charging. He's like, all right, I got this guy. He's backing him up. Yair's going to go way down here, and you see Zombie kind of trying to locate that uppercut right here. Right? But look at where Yair is. You don't see fighters do this. And what's so amazing about what goes down must also come up. Here we go. Yair creates a perfect strike here with the elbow. Nail zombie. You cannot defend stuff like this. You really can't. So these are some of the things that he does inside the octagon. Goes right back to the underhook. Let's watch this right here. Really simple stuff that Yair sets things up with. And then he follows it up with fabulous stuff. So he's always mixing and matching his striking. Sometimes he throws simple stuff. Sometimes he throws very, very high level techniques that no one else can do. So here's this little stump front kick. We've seen Holly Holm do it. We've seen John Jones do it. It's nothing we haven't seen. He backs up Zombie a little bit and Zombie's like, all right, whatever. But Zombie's mindful of that left kick as everyone has to be. So we know Zombie, here he is. He's thinking, okay, I've still got outside leg position. I know how dangerous this is. You can see Yair has not a lot of weight on this leg as his heel is up, most of the weight on his back foot. So Zombie's like, all right, I know what my threats are. I'm in a, I'm in a pretty good space here. Watch what Yair does. And Yair's a flow fighter. He just sees things and he does them. I mean, he doesn't plan them. So here is that huge jump. He's going to jump with that left lead knee. So he jumps up and we see Zombie here going, okay, I thought you might do something with that left side. I need to get out of here. I don't have nothing to do with that, right? And remember, Yair was leaning on his back leg, just kind of hanging out. And he's like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to do this jumping flying knee right from here. He's so explosive. Watch what Yair does. Midair, bang. I mean, look at this knee. Look at the level. Look at how high he is in the air here. I mean, just look at where he lands this. I mean. These are, his head is over the octagon right here. These things are so hard to plan for. And Volkanovs, he's, he's, in, he's in for a real battle here. And I'm sure he's going to be prepared with his film study. You can't plan for this. Throws the right head kick on the way out. So dangerous all the time. And here we see, we talked about his legs. Let's just talk about how slick he is with his hands. And if we can show you this right here, you can see him grabbing Emmett's wrists. Right? Emmett was so concerned about the leg kicks and he's watching, he's watching. Yair just kind of walked in and, hey, what's up? Grabs his wrists. Off of this wrist grab, he knows he's occupied both hands. Emmett can't defend. He pushes and pulls that hand down. And then right over the top of that, he sees that opening and he capitalizes on it. He's going to hit Emmett right in the temple. You see this hand. Look at it. He started up top, but he pulls it down. And now Emmett can't defend his head. And that's exactly what he's looking for. He's going to sneak in this elbow right here, right off the break. 
right to the temple. And this elbow is really, really going to hurt Emmett. And it's little stuff like that that really breaks your confidence because you're like, man, I can't get close to this guy. I can't be far away. No matter what I'm doing, I'm getting hurt. Sl slick stuff here by him. Now here he is switching stances. Perfect pause. We pause it at the perfect time. Here's him in the southpaw stance. And we want to talk about, there's the left leg again. He's stepping forward. And here's Emmett. He's watching him. Okay, what are you doing? Let's watch Emmett's hands and what he does with his hands right here. Now, we're going to slow-mo this. All Yair's going to do here, Brendan, is go like that. But when Yair moves that left leg, what? You got to move. And watch Emmett's reaction here. He's just, all Yair's doing is stepping through. Watch Emmett's hands right here. He's like, oh, no. Emmett instinctively kind of balls himself up, right, and gets ready for that contact. All Yair has done was switch stances, and this is the brilliance of how he sets up his strikes. Emmett's like, okay, I guess that body kick's not coming. Yair's like, yeah, no, it's not coming. Oh, maybe it is. No, it's not. Look at that question mark kick. So he, he walks through, steps through, gives him that little pause, and then brings the right leg all the way over the top where he can't see it, right? lands it, but not only that, we talked about how he adds on with the punches, and right as Emmett's coming out of that, he hits him with that right hand. So he's so good at putting these together, putting his strikes together. We're just gonna let this play too. This is him and Max Holloway, and if you stay at that mid-range with Yair, I'll take your leg, okay? I'll hit you in the head. Watch these hands, watch the speed, bop, bop. I mean, fast. And we leave this in here to show Yair admires his work sometimes. I mean, that whole sequence was beautiful. He hits Max with the one-two, hits him low, backs up, lightning speed, head kick, backs up some more, one-two, smokes him. I mean, nails him. Then he stands there and gets kind of proud. You don't get proud against Max Holloway. He got nailed there because he kind of admires his work. He's a fighter. He's a flow fighter. It's just part of the way he fights, but he's going to have to watch out because Volkanovski, you give him some stuff that he knows that he can count on, staying in the middle, staying in the A zone, he's going to capitalize. So awesome stuff here by Yair. And then finally, you tell yourself, okay, you know what? I got to pressure this guy. What we've been watching, Brendan, is all him kind of pressing forward and people kind of reacting to him. Well, now let's see. Brian Ortega said, man, forget all that. I'm going to get close to you. All right, he said, he said, I'm going to grab this guy. I'm not trying to play games with him out here. So he starts to try to corral him and watch this. Little head kick. Ortega's ready for it. No problem. Swipes the hands. So Ortega's like, all right, getting close to the fence. I got him. I'm going to have to show this in slow motion to show you how effective. Watch the left hand. Little faint with the left hand. Now watch the right hand. Yair will let people come back towards him. He's so fast with his hands. That right hand lands flush right on the chin, and Ortega never saw it at all. That little left hand that you saw him throw gets a reaction from Ortega. Watch this hand right here. This little hand that he puts out here gets Ortega to react, and that's just enough space that he needs. Watch this reaction right here from Ortega. And then the right hand is right behind it. The right hand's gonna land right on the chin. Look at that. Ortega got a great chin, got that Mexican chin. Mm -hmm. I guess they both got that yeah, Mexican right. chin. <laughs> and now watch how he gets out of this. Bam, and he circles out and he's out. So you try to pressure Yair, you try to stay at range with him. Boy, he's got tricks for everything in the bag, so he's ready. Somebody who has fundamentals and the technical ability for everybody is Volkanovsky. He's obviously a diverse striker, but in a very different way, and despite the fact that he's shorter than just about everybody, reach is something that certainly comes into play. 71, 71 inches here. So they've got the same reach. And I'm glad you brought that up. Volk has got really long arms, even though he's not very tall. A very balanced striker, great leg kicks, precision and power in both hands. Some masterful performances by Volk. Let's take a look at some of the things he does inside the octagon. Here we go. So let's just watch this with Islam. So we see Volk, he just kind of you watch Vol, you can't really tell what he's doing. But when you break it down, it's like, it's like mind-blowing because he's so good at the small details. You watch him, he's just kind of trickling over here. And Islam's kind of going to follow him here. And you see Islam following him. And watch what Volk does here. So right when Islam tries to line him up, you're going to see Volk knows. I got to get on outside of that leg. He's going to do this little sprint. He does a little touch right here. Now watch the little sprint step. He does that little sprint step. Now, all of a sudden, what? He was inside of Islam's left hand. 
He waits, waits, waits. He throws that sprint step hook and he gets way outside. Now he's got his track. He's way outside. He's going to throw the right hand afterwards. He's going to go to throw it, but he's going to see Islam's too far away. So he says, all right, I'm not going to waste the energy. Islam's way out of position. I mean, look where Islam is now. Islam's turned. He's like, where did he go? He's behind me. So Volk's always watching. He's like, I don't want to waste energy on that. Let me just stop. So now you can see that Volk, what? He kept that outside leg position. Now again, let me get my range. Let me touch. And so Islam's like, all right, he's going to try to go outside me again. I know he's going to try to go behind me again. I'm going to line him up. I can turn and line him up. Watch how smart this guy is. So he uses this to close distance all the time. If you watch this fight, he does it over and over and over again. He acts like he's going to step up that side and he switches his stance right here. We're going to let this play and we got to slow-mo after it. Boom, cracks Islam, catches him. Let's look at what he does here. As he steps through, Islam's like, whoa, wait a minute, what are you doing? Look at Islam. He throws this little right hook and the little right hook is just enough, just enough space for him to get that elbow away, right? He got him to bring that elbow up just a little bit. This is how good Alex is. He's going to fit this left hand right through that window. I mean, right through it. Now, the other hand is still here. For him to be able to switch stances, right, and find those spots so quickly, that's almost impossible to defend for Islam because he was looking at one thing, now he's looking at another thing. And he made one small mistake by bringing his hand away from his face, and he pays for it big. Alex cracks him, and this really put Islam on notice, like, hey, man, this is going to be a dogfight. This is that same switch stance. We're going to let it play. There's that switch. He switches stances. He throws that, but he knows Islam's kind of wise to it. He uses this to set up the leg kick. You keep drifting back because you figured out he's going for the punch. He's going to hit you with the leg. So you see that he's not even really trying to land that punch. He just kind of puts it up there. He knows Islam's going to back up. Islam with the same reaction with the hook. Now he lands the leg kick. So he's constantly sprinting in and making people react. If they back up too far, he bangs the leg. If he stay close enough, he hits him with that 71-inch reach. Beautiful stuff here by Volk. And when he starts winning the fight, this was his kind of coming out party against Mendez. He starts pushing Mendez back, and here's where he finishes him. But we're going to look at this in slow motion and see what's so amazing about this. So we watch Mendez here. I want you to watch Mendez. He does the right thing. So his elbow is this high. He's going to bring his elbow all the way down. Both of them tuck him in and really try to protect his body. He sees that level change from Volk. He's like, man, he's trying to crush my body. I got to protect myself. Watch his elbows. Watch how good of a job Mendez does here trying to cover that liver. He's like, all right, man, I got my stuff covered up. Look at how freaking good Volkanovsky is. This is the only place he could fit this punch. And he fits it right underneath the guard. Boom. Still finds the placement there, which is awesome. But that's not the end. Now we're going to pay attention to his right hand and what he does with his right hand and how he controls Mendez, his left arm. He's going to take that hand. He's going to kind of pull this down just a little bit. And he pulls down Mendez's arm. And right after he pulls it down, it creates the space that he needs up top to get a strike zone. And here we go. Pull down the arm. There's the space. Bang. Clips him right in the head. Pulls down the wrist. Hits him over the top. So some really crafty stuff inside. Drops Mendez. And let's just watch these follow-up shots. I mean, no explanation needed. There's one. Look at the placement here. Right behind the ear. I mean, he's still locating perfectly, even though the fight's almost over. Uh, Volkanovski locks in. He's very precise. So beautiful stuff against the cage. And here we go against Korean Zombie. He's in orthodox stance. He throws his right hand and he splits the guard here, Brendan, right in between. And that's great. Look at his head. His head is way over here, right? This is the A zone where all the traffic happens. Volkanovsky knows I got to get out of there. So he changes his level from here, gets way over here, throws the right hand. Okay, great. Well, that's not the end. He's going to come all the way back up top. He's going to flash this left hand, right? And all he's trying to do is blind zombie with this left hand. Watch this left hand. 
he flashes it, just puts it in front of his eye line, right? But he's already starting to move this. He's already starting to move his leg. And you will see right here, he flashes up top and continues the motion through. He's again, attacking the legs. He does stuff up top while already throwing the legs in motion. Now his head is way freaking over here. He was way over here. From here, right? Bang, all the way back and out. So this is how he doesn't get counter when he kicks. He's so good at drawing people in and then taking out their base. And we'll, this speaks for itself right here. Here's the feint, he's got zombie reacting. And I mean, the power of Volkanovski at 145 pounds. Something that, you know, we can't not talk about. He's shown tremendous power in both of his hands. Beautiful striking diversity from Volkanovski. And he's proven to have the ability to survive in, in a barn burner, if you will. Like when things get heated against Brian Ortega or Max Holloway, he can hang in there. But it's his fight IQ that really separates him. He's not often in those type of fights because he controls where it takes place. This guy studies voraciously. He studies the opponents and he uses that to come up with incredible footwork and always kind of be a step ahead of his opponents with his feet, really. I mean, that's really what it's about with Volkanovski. And here we go. We see Volk. He is southpaw here. As Islam comes forward, he switches back to orthodox and then he bangs the leg. But what really happens here? So again, this is just, these are small details that really kind of go unnoticed. But man, when you watch him as a coach, they're just unreal. So here he is, Southpaw. He knows that he's in front of Islam's, what? He's in front of Islam's left hand, right? We know Islam likes to bring that right hook as he did against Oliveira back around. So he knows he doesn't want to be here because he's straight in the A zone right here on a Southpaw versus Southpaw. So watch what he does. He gives him a picture and Islam's like, all right, here I come. And as Islam comes forward, you're going to see Volk switch stances. So now he is orthodox. He's got this hook kind of coming over the top and he's got this right hand. So in doing that, where did he bring his foot? He's so good at that. Look, now he's on the outside. Now his head is drifting this way. Now he's not quite on the A line and his right hand is right in front, more of a direct line than Islam's left hand. And he does that by what? Here we go. Nope, now I'm over here. So similar to Yair. Mm -hmm. So now he knows that Islam, Islam sees this and he's kind of like, eh. so he kind of backs up. As Islam backs up, oh, and he goes to strike. Thank you very much. I'm just going to kick your leg. Let's see if you can see this here. There's the leg kick. There's the land right here. So he'll use those setups with his footwork to back up, throw. And when the person retreats or if they stay, he bangs the leg. Beautiful stuff here by Volkanovsky. Incredible footwork. Very, very smart. Now, let's watch this. This is getting close to the end of the fight. You can see our guy, Islam. You know, he's banged up, right? These guys were in a freaking war. What an awesome show for all of us fans to watch. We're going to see the subtle, he gets going to creep forward a little bit and try to grab Islam. Look at Islam level change. All right. I get close to you. I see what your reaction is. I make my, my read, I make my mental note. So he sees that little level change at Islam. So he says, okay, I think I know what he's going to do. I think he wants to take down here in the fifth round in the middle of a close fight here at home in Australia. I'm going to lower my level and I'm going to punch at his chest. Look at what he does here. He starts up here. He is right here. Let's get it there. He and Islam is right here. He know he knew Islam was going to level change. And watch what happens. Watch the level change here off of Volk. He started it before Islam did lands it right on his ear. Look at that. Step ahead of Islam at the end of the fight. Really had Islam tired and frustrated. Drops him, steps back. Look at that beautiful footwork. Ends up on top. This was a, a big moment for him. And here he is against Max. But let's watch what he does. He gets Max to react here. Throwing some punches. Now he's watching Max, right? He sees that Max is backing up and he's just kind of watching him, right? He's just kind of looking at him right here. And Max is kind of waiting to counter and time him, right? So Volk pays attention. He sees that. He throws another jab. He sees the reaction from Max. Now I'm going to show you how slick he is. He's throwing these punches out here, but he's not really trying to land them because he knows Max is waiting to counter. So Max is like, all right, it's time. Here I go. As Max steps in the counter, watch Volkanovsky. Again, the same thing. He will... Come inside. Hey, what's up? What's up? Oh, yeah, come and get me. Bang. 
He'll either exit out or switch sides. Knocks the base out of Max. Beautiful stuff. Really frustrates Max. Made him look, made him not look like Max. And lastly, against the great Jose Aldo, we want to put the two goats of featherweight together. Um, can't say enough great stuff about either of these fighters. But what do we know about Jose? We know that he's got one of the best right leg kicks in the game. We go back to the WEC and the Uriah Faber fight. If, if you guys remember that fight back in the day, if you've been fans for a long time, you don't want to mess with that leg. Watch the discipline here by Volk. Let me circle away, away, away. Nope, I'm not staying there. Every time he got in front of Jose, he got away. Now he's making his angles and landing his own stuff. Volkanovsky is incredible with his footwork, his fight IQ, understanding what his opponents do and being a step ahead of them. Both of these fighters are known for their striking. They're known for being well-rounded, certainly not as grapplers, but they can get the job done if the fight goes to the mat, as evidenced by their previous performances. It might make the difference, though, Volkanovski probably a little more decorated in that area. Let's talk about it. I mean, you want to stand with this guy for five rounds? I mean, that's volatile. We know Volkanovski has gotten a lot more takedowns. He's one of the most physical 45ers. He fought at welterweight. He had his last fight against Islam with some top control. We know that he's got good takedowns and good clinch work. Let's take a look at some of the stuff he does in the grappling department. And for sure, you know, he's gonna be looking to mix it up. So I put this in here. This is Islam Makachev, okay? I mean, this is Islam, right? And I mean, whatever you think about him, you know, the guy is where he is for a reason. One of the best grapplers we have in the UFC and strong, obviously. And look at Volk, there he is. Uh, Volkanovsky, he might not be big in stature, but he is powerful. This is his go-to position. He has head position here that he uses. He gets an underhook here, and he works this clinch position. With those long arms, he might not be tall, but he can get high underhooks and use head position because he's actually shorter. So he goes for this little outside reap, and he's always attacking the legs. There's the outside reap. And this is not an easy takedown to get, especially against a wrestler like Islam, but that's really not what he's doing. If he misses the outside reap, he breaks away, bang, 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 fires big shots. We see this over and over again. Now, here he is on top of Islam again. This is Islam. We've never seen Islam on his back like this. Look at Islam, he's exhausted. Look at Big Volk dropping these big bombs. Look at the posture and the height of Volkanovsky, how he keeps that leg extended so he can get those big strikes, keeps his hips up and his head up. Very good height here, good fundamentals, great ground and pound. You don't wanna be there with Volk, and it doesn't matter who you are. So very physical on the ground. And we go back to this, this is that same clinch position, and, and I put this in here so we can look at the details. So let's start right here. So first, we see Volkanovski controlling the elbow of Zombie here. Zombie has an underhook right here, but it's very low. And if I have a very low underhook, let me use you really fast. When I have an underhook, I wanna jack you up, right? I wanna jack you up. Let's do this side so they can see. I wanna jack you up, Brendan. I wanna put you way over here. <laughs> if my underhook is here, what? I can't no, do it. I can't do it. Right. I got no power. If you grab, now look at that. I can't lift. Mm -hmm. So Volk, again, very creative with his strategy. He grabs the elbow. He nullifies the underhook. And then in that nullification, Zombie's like, all right, but he's not done yet. Watch what he's going to do with that hand. He's going to re-grip that. There it is again. You can see it very clearly here. Very. And now look at this. Now he doesn't even have contact. Now he's like, oh, man. Very strong, very simple. What do we have on the other side? We have an underhook, so we're controlling and we're controlling. Very smart stuff. And here we go. Now he's going to take that wrist and he's going to strip it all the way down. So he basically rode that elbow down to the wrist and then he stuffs that wrist against Zombie and he still has the underhook. So now Zombie's thinking like, man, like I'm pinned down here. I got to do something. He gets people busy with all this stuff thinking about the breakaway striking, right? Maybe I'm on a breakaway elbow. Who knows what I'm gonna do? And then there goes that reap again. There goes that takedown. And I put this in here because we know that Yair has good groundwork now. We're gonna talk about that. He uses his powerful legs to get knee shields in and, and kick away. Look at how Volk floats the hips here and kind of deals with that, posts his hand and then beats the hips. And then this takedown is just awesome. So we know he wants to cover distance against Yair. We know he doesn't want to stay at range with Yair. And he's going to have to come up with ways to do that. And let's just watch what he does with his feet. 
Right now, they're both A zone, A zone. They're both right in front of each other, right? The power, everything is there. Let's watch his feet. Watch what he does. He's gonna just take a couple steps this way to line up that trip and get this foot outside of that foot. Slick stuff here and not something that you see. This is a really high level move. It's not high percentage. So we watch Falk. Now he's where he wants to be. And usually don't want to get in this position a lot um, for wrestling, but this shows how slick this is. So now he's outside that leg. He's created that path for him to take that giant step and hit this trip. And this trip is all about timing. Uh, when people do it in the gym, I always tell them, don't try that, right? Mm -hmm. It's very low percentage. You're not going to get it. But Volkanovski executes it so well. We're going to watch him go right up that line. He's going to step behind. Zombies, he tries to step over, but it's too late. He steps behind him, corrals that takedown, and hits it. And I left this in here again because we know that Yair is going to try to re-guard and use the guard work. Look at the height on Volk how he hips in and gets all that pressure inside to smash those legs down. And lastly, if you're too tired and you're running out of gas and you stay close to him, this is what he's gonna do. Let's just watch these shots. First the knee, boom. Now some punches. He's gonna land a big elbow, I think, here in a second. Bam. I mean, if, you, if you're tired and you stand still against Volk in the later rounds, he's gonna hurt you against the fence. So incredible grappling on the ground, takedowns, clinch work. Volkanovski, so well balanced, so impressive to watch. On the other side, Yair Rodriguez has always been known as the highlight real striker, yeah. but the grappling has always been there and he's grown it as evidenced by the way that he got the interim belt in the, yeah. in the first place by beating Josh Emmett by submission. Well, you said it right. He's a highlight real striker. Well, I'm fighting a highlight real striker and I'm a physical featherweight. What am I going to try to do? I'm going to try to wrestle a little bit. Right? I want to take some gas out of that gas tank unbelievably crafty on the ground, submissions, and some stuff from the bottom, elbows, hammer fists, and let's take a look at what Yair does here. So Josh Emmett, we're just gonna look at the last fight with Josh Emmett because we feel like Josh Emmett is similar in stature, he's a very strong wrestler, he's a physical guy, and we're just gonna watch how Yair handles this. Here's a takedown attempt, he gets in here, he smashes the head, and this is huge. What You wanna separate the head from the body, right, and sh shove that head down on a single, and that's exactly what he does. And we're going to watch him limp his leg out of here. We're going to watch one small detail here. You see how he turns his foot and he gets it flat like this. If you keep your leg straight, right, they can hold on to your ankle. So just a small little detail. Limps his leg. We call that limping out. He limps his leg out, stops that takedown. Now we see Emmett's like, all right, I can't grab this guy in space. Let me shove him against the cage. Similar to what we talked about with Volk. So he's got him against the cage and he's going to go ahead and get some airtime here. We're just gonna show you the technical skill of Yair. So here comes the airtime. Now, we see that Yair is off the ground here, but watch this shin and this leg. When someone picks you up and you got no defense, you're in the air, not a good place to be. Your last defense is hooking inside their thigh with your own leg. So now they're trying to pull their own weight up too. It's like a counter pressure. That's exactly what he does and it ends up working out and Emmett's gotta put him back down. And so once Emmett puts him back down, he's able to do his defense, get his overhook, and start working his way up. And then he keeps this overhook, which is super important. This is what we want to talk about. He's got this overhook. We see Emmett trying to block knees here, but Rodriguez is going to kind of walk around a little bit, and you're going to see him. Watch Emmett try to pull that. He tries to pull that out. He's like, I don't like that. I got to get that out of there. But Yair keeps it, and Yair's going to hit him with a really slick move right here. He's going to grab his head, and now he's got that overhook, so he can't defend with this arm, and he's going to hit him right perfectly with this knee, right in the ribs, right there. I mean, a hard shot. Again, we see Emmett just getting crushed to the body by Yair. So he'll work strikes out of these clinch positions. Now here he is on the ground, and we want to talk about what he does again with the wrist. We showed it standing up. Now let's show it on the ground. These principles all, they all mesh together. Wrist control is good on top against the cage uh, for takedowns. It's also good on the bottom, right? So I can't get grounded and pounded and so I can set up triangles and submissions. So we see the wrist control here. Emmett's trying to get his wrist free, but let's watch what Yair does. He's gonna hit him with big shots and he's gonna extend his legs He's got really strong, long legs. 
And even though he's only got a 71 inch reach, he uses his legs all the time, even now on the ground. He extends them out with his legs and gets that extension and look at his upper body. His upper body's going this way. So he can actually generate a ton of power from the bottom using his body. And that's exactly what he does here. And look at Emmett. Emmett's like, damn, these hurt. These do hurt. Get hit from the bottom, hurt. Look at the timing. He waited. Look at Yair, he's looking at him. He's timing it. A little up kick going on, boom. Emmett's like, man, this is not easy to pass this guy's legs. So Yair will use his legs, not only for the kicks, but he uses them defensively with knee shields, up kicks, also stretching the guy out. And then finally, that matters because we get to the triangle. Now here we are. All right, great job. Emmett's like, I know this. Like, where do we go? If I try to triangle you, what do I need? I need up. your freaking head. Yeah. So what do we always say? Look at the sky, guy. Look at the sky, right? Get your head up. Okay, so he's got his head up. Yair expected that, but Yair just got that wrist. That's all he needed. He just needed that little wrist. He keeps that wrist, and he's going to use his legs again and that wrist control to pull down and land those hammer fists. Now, we remember that he was landing a big one, and Emmett's like, I got to block these, man. These are getting annoying. All of a sudden, look at where our head is, and that arm is in a bad space right here. And Emmett's already starting to get a little purple, but it's going to get worse. Um, this is what Yair does. He uses his legs and he uses this stuff off the bottom. Now he's grabbed the foot. He's going to lock in the foot right here. We see him grabbing the foot. This is huge. This is him locking that triangle in. It's still not 100% because we can see a little bit of space right here, but he's about to cinch that up. Emmett's in a bad way and it all came from that ground and pound from the bottom. Remember, Emmett was high, had good posture. He knew where he needed to be. Watch Yair tighten this up here. Maybe one more for good measure. Right, let me grab that head. And you're going to see Emmett's going to start kind of tapping. I mean, he's getting purple, but there's that foot grab again. And this is when we really lock and cinch that thing down. We pull down here. And, you know, a lot of people say don't grab your foot and stuff. There's different ways to finish it, but I'm sure Yair knows the dexterity of his body. Uh, some people do this and they'll pop their freaking knee. But Yair's got incredible dexterity. And again, look at this. I mean, that calf, I mean, he's got that thing cranking. Emmett, purple, fight over. This is how he won the interim title. So he has become very dangerous off of his back, and he can also scramble and get back on his feet. Well, we can't talk about Yair Rodriguez without talking about how unpredictable he is. We've shown on the feet, if you know he's kicking, you still don't know how. Obviously, if you go to the ground, he can do a bit of everything, top or bottom. What's the X factor for Yair Rodriguez? Absolutely. It's his unpredictability. I mean, we've talked about his speed. He's so fast with everything, but he also is so unpredictable. I think he's a flow fighter. I don't even think he really knows what he's going to do sometimes. Here he's against Emmett. Mm, yeah, let me throw this jump knee, right? I'll end up on my back, but that's all right because I can fight off my back as well. He doesn't really worry about bad positions, and this is incredible. Here's Yair. He's on the screen just so everybody knows and they can remember. Here's his head. Right now, we talked about him making his own planes, right? Well, let's just let this play. Oh, I'm gone. He's out of the screen now. Look at, look at Max. Max is like, where did you go, man? He will go all the way down and get so low. It's like, okay, well, you're down there, but what are you going to do from there? Well, this is what he's going to do. He's going to level change that low, and then from that level change, come back up and land that elbow. We just never see people do that. You're Max, you're walking him down, you feel good, like you feel like you got him. And then all of a sudden he's way down here and you go to find him and here comes an elbow straight up. It's just not something that you see, right? So beautiful stuff from Yair. We know he does that tricky elbow and we've seen it and we can't not show Yair and not show this. This fight was in the fifth round, super close fight. Uh, this was like the last 10 seconds, 15 seconds of the fight. So we're gonna see this. Watch these two, yeah, let, let's go. Yair is a flow fighter. He likes to have fun. And when he has fun, he just goes, right? And, and this is what he's really worked on is his gas tank to kind of keep that going. And that's gonna be a real interesting point. So here he goes. Hey, zombie, let's do this. Close fight, last 10 seconds. All right, we got a deal? Yeah, we got a deal, let's go. Okay, so here they come. Yair's gonna throw his combo, punches with kicks, no surprise. Here comes Zombie. What happened? I remember Paul Felder was calling this fight, and I think he thought it was a headbutt. I love Paul Felder, but you can't blame him either. 
Uh, nobody knew what happened. Everyone was like, what happened? Again, we see Yair, we see the height of Yair right here. And we see the height of zombie. We use those arrows. And watch this. Yair is going to go from there all the way to here. How do you prepare for that? You can't. This is not, if I told you, Brendan, I want you to put your head all the way down in between your legs, that's going to be your offensive setup. Right. Huh? Yeah. Nobody does this. So because nobody does this, you're not ready for this. I mean, it's incredible. There's nothing to say about that. It's so unpredictable, so well executed. We've never seen anything like it. One of the best, greatest knockouts ever in the history of the UFC. Unpredictability, Yair Rodriguez. You never know what you're going to get, Brandon. And that was the main event when we were celebrating the 25th anniversary of the UFC. Now, 30 years we're celebrating all year long, and Yair Rodriguez has a chance to pull another highlight reel. And there's a lot of fighters that say, he's never fought someone like me. Yair Rodriguez can truly say that. But for Alexander Volkanovsky, he obviously has an X factor of experience, no matter who he's fighting on the other side. Six title fights, five of them going the full 25. And you could say, oh, well, he, you know, he's not stopping people. That's Max Holloway, who we thought was the other greatest featherweight. This guy's fighting the best of the best. He always shows up. A lot of people thought he won the Islam fight. He is fighting the very best. His championship experience is just unmatchable. And I mean, and we look at Volk here, and we're going to look at some of the people he's fought. The reason we put this in here is, you know, a lot of talk about who won the fight between him and Max, this and that. Well, the last fight, there were no questions. And it was just, he was a step ahead here. Look at this slip, rip. And that really cut Max badly and really kind of changed the tide of the fight. Domination by Volk. He's always adapting and evolving. And this was one of the you know, craziest moments we spoke about earlier where we saw the real grit in Volk, who he was and what he was about. This was the worst spot he's ever been in. His head is freaking purple. Uh, you know, He was in this choke tight. And we're just going to watch this and let this play. We went over this. Um, you know, we broke down him and Islam. Go back and watch it. He gets out of the guillotine. All right. And he comes up. He's, go, he's fishing for the darts there. He's going to change his position, get on top. All right, we're good. We're good. Oh, no. We ended up in a triangle. And we broke this down extensively. He gets out of the triangle. And that's not the best part, Brendan. The best part is he ends up on top. He's a beast, Volk. He comes with big shots. And this is how you break people mentally. And... Let's break this down. This is his last fight against Islam. Fifth round, maybe 2-2, two, two, however you scored it. You know, that's a different conversation. But Islam's like, yo, I need to take this dude down. I need to slow this thing down. And let's watch Volkanovsky here. Here comes the shot, and we're going to see Volk. He's so good at this. He gets this little shin or this little foot hook, and he's going to use it to kick over and explode into Islam and create a scramble. Watch what he does here. He uses that leg to kick over, and now he's created a little bit of space. He's going to bring his body. You want to bring your rear leg out, right? And you want to go back and get up. Watch what he does here. He's going to, this is so athletic and so strong. He's going to bring that leg all the way back. Look at that. This is, I mean, in the trenches right here. These two guys right here are in the trenches, both mentally right here and physically. Fifth round, are you going to get up? Can you get up? Islam's like, all I got to do is get him back down. All I got to do is get him back down. Watch Vol. Nope. Up to his feet. Boom, there he goes. He's going to turn the tide here. And the way that he ends this fight, Brendan, had everybody reeling, everybody talking about it. Everybody in Australia were on their feet here. The way that he ends this fight, Big shots here from Volkanovsky. And, you know, Islam, we've seen the memes. You know, he's holding on for dear life. A little unfair to Islam, fought a great fight as well. Um, but Volk finishing strong, showing that cardio, showing that championship experience. It's who he is, and that's why he's number one in the game right now. Well, for all his physical tools, uh, maybe no more impressive aspect of Volkanovsky's game than mentally. His mentality is absolutely, second to none. Absolutely, I agree. It's his fight IQ his film study, and how prepared he is when he steps inside the octagon. All right, so let's summarize. There was a lot there, masterfully done, yeah, as always. You. Keys to victory. And uh, we'll start with the champion, we'll start Alexander with the Volkanovsky. Champ. I mean, listen, he has to control the distance. We spoke about the 71 inches 
right? But Yair's got long legs. He's 5'11". We showed the dexterity and his ability to reach and touch these guys from far away. He's masterful at it. He's got to control the distance. He uses that little sprint step, right, to get inside and to freeze people. And when he does that, we showed the clinch control. We showed all the boxing in close. I'd look for him to do that. He will probably land some leg kicks on the exit, but like we spoke about, I don't think he's gonna try to trade kick for kick with Yair. Instead, he has to utilize his offensive grappling. We've seen Volk, we know how strong he is. His last fight at 155 against Islam, put him against the cage, ending up on top. Look for him to put Yair against the fence, try to take him down, try to wear on that gas tank, kill that mobility, kill the scariness, those strikes, all the unpredictability and kind of drain him if that fight goes to the fourth and fifth round. To do that, he needs to set a high pace. We have seen Volk get stronger and stronger and stronger. The film has shown it. Yair has, you know, against Max Holloway, he got taken down at the end of the fight, got controlled a little bit. He's improved tremendously, as we saw in the Josh Emmett fight, uh, compared to the Frankie Edgar fight. If you go back and watch him get controlled pretty much the whole fight, we know he's improved, but can he handle the pace of the champion? We know Volk's gonna try to set a high pace, try to drain that gas tank and take him to those later rounds and see if he can, if he can swim. Let's switch it over to the blue corner and Yair Rodriguez who's trying to give Mexico another champion. Yair Rodriguez, incredible range management. This guy's a master at that bouncing in and bouncing out, keeping people right at the end of the range of those feet, those toes, and that shin. He's so good at it. Look for him to do that. Look for him to keep setting traps and trying to trick Volkanovski because he has to. We know Volk is gonna study him so much and he's gonna try to set traps for Yair, all Yair's little things that he does. Volk's gonna be ready for that. And he cannot let Volk get a picture and start building a lead because Volkanovski knows how to win. So to do that, to maintain the range management, he's gonna have to have footwork and movement. He's got tremendous footwork, tremendous movement. We showed how he blends his strikes in with his footwork, how he's always moving and changing the picture. And I look for them to do that. He's gonna have to keep that up the whole fight. You cannot let Volk start slowing him down. And it's gonna be interesting to see if, if he can maintain that if he wins the scrambles. He cannot get put against the fence. He cannot get put down on his back. We know Volkanovski has taken people down. We know that he, in his earlier fights in the UFC, took people down a lot. So. Look for him to have a very blended game plan to make it physical and to get inside of the kicking range of Yair. So Yair's got to win those scrambles like we showed with Emmett and keep Volk at the end of those punches. And he's so unpredictable, in one of those scrambles, he could land the finishing blow. Some big recent wins for Yair Rodriguez has gotten him the interim featherweight title. He looks to join Brandon Moreno and Alexa Grasso as undisputed UFC champions. It will not be easy though against a fighter like Alexander Volkanovsky who in the beginning part of his featherweight run was that spoiler. Now he's become the fighting superstar that is headlining International Fight Week. For Safe Saud, Brendan Fitzgerald, thanks for watching UFC Breakdown and enjoy the main event at UFC 290.